guys, Simon here from D6 Evolution. I'm here with Andy. And we're going to talk about the new Grey Knights from the new book. Oh, this is so good. Um, I have to caveat this, but I am not a Grey Knights player at all. But when I read this, when I read this book, I was super excited. Massive, massive improvement overall. Yeah. Really, really needed. Um, I they was... may win the award for the most improved faction here. Quite possibly, uh, other than maybe Space Marines from their last book, perhaps. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, they, they, ignoring they them, ignoring. It. The point is, the point is, regardless of how crazy Space Marines are, Grey Knight's got a really good hit. <laughs> yes. So, um, I should probably carry on saying I was a massive Grey Knight player uh, up until maybe beginning of Eighth Edition, and I kind of dropped them behind because they yeah. were just really bad. Uh, but this has made some leaps and bounds um, on making them a much more playable army. Um, they've taken a lot of cues from some of the Space Marine stuff that's come out. So I think this could be really, really good. I think this could be really, really good. Yeah. So, guys, just to say, this is a competitive focus review. Uh, review. So we're not going to go through absolutely everything. Um, we're going to put all the rules on the screen as we go through, because uh, that's what we do here. So um, if you want a more in-depth thing, feel free to pause and just look at all the rules. But we're going to focus on what is competitive and what we think really combos well with each other. Yeah. Right, so let's dive straight in. Okay, so we should probably start with their sort of doctrines, or as they call it, um, <laughs> Masters of the Warp. Yeah, so the first thing to say is, yeah, they get Master of the Warp, they do not get combat doctrines. They do not. They have their own special doctrines, yeah. they have. So you can't soup them with normal space points. No, and yeah. So well, you the, can, but you lose all the But you lose all the cool stuff, and yeah. th this is kind of what makes them really good now. So this is only if you run Grey Knight's Pure. Yeah. Um, and there's some really good stuff in here. Yeah, so quickly, just quickly before that, though, obviously they've got Shock Assault, they've got Bolter Discipline now, they're obviously those are all yeah. standard rules for all Space Marine armies, that's all rolled into here. Uh, and then they've got Mass of the Warp, so their special doctrines are called Tides, and the first one is called Tide of Fury, and when this is, uh, Tide is dominant... Uh, all infantry nemesis weapons can reroll wound rolls of one. It's okay. There's better. There's better. There is better. And you can choose which one you start in, can you? Yes. You don't have to cycle through them like the combat doctrine. No, no. You just declare when you're using them. So you, at, at pre-game, you just say, I'm starting on this one. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite that's, nice. that's super strong. The next one is Tide of Convergence. And while it's dominant, add one to the strength and damage characteristic of all psi weapons that infantry uh, ability are oh, equipped with. Oh, that's good. Uh, yes, and it specifically does mention that anything affected by psi bolt ammunition yeah, so that's is a psi weapon. Yeah, so that stratagem one CP turn your bolters into psi bolters. So that means that a group of ten guys with um, storm bolters all of a all of a sudden is strength six AP minus one. Is it AP minus? NP minus one and damage two. two. That's really good. And you're gonna see how later in the video how that that specific thing can really combo to get It's really good. And especially when everything in your army has got the storm bolters. I mean you can just pick and choose which unit you use side bolt ammo on. Yeah. Great, really, really good. The next one is Tide of Shadows. And while the tide is dominant, a unit with this ability receives the benefit of cover, even if it's not in cover. Uh, and if it isn't cover, it's minus one to hit. Okay, so this this is really good, and it's actually better than Space Marine ones. You hear that? Better than Space Marines. And there's, there's two reasons for this. Number yeah. one, um, there's no minimum range on that cover. So like Raven Guard and everything, it's if, if you're outside 12, you, you get cover. This is, you just get cover. Just get cover. Just straight up cover. Uh, it's not as useful as it used to be, because there's a lot of things in the game now which ignore cover, and people are specifically taking them, because everything in the game is like being stealthy master artisans and so forth yeah um but the second part of it minus one to hit if you are on or within cover yeah so the wording is um it while it is entirely on or within a terrain feature minus one to hit so the wording's a little janky because technically you could put the base of something like a storm raven within cover and it's technically within cover, yes. and then you saw Raven because minus two to hit. Yes, you don't need to be 50% obscured. No. Um, which is really cool. So you can have an army of minus two to hit flyers, and you choose, obviously, you're going to choose this, um, we'll call it a doctrine or a tithe or whatever it's yes. called, um, to happen on turn one. So this is your defensive start. This yeah. is what you go. So I'm minus one to hit, plus one to cover. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really good. It's Essentially, it saves you two CP from doing prepared positions. Yeah. 
Do you think it will get fixed with the uh, vehicles always benefiting from the minus one to hit? Uh, and, and the plus one cover? No, I don't think so. I, th- I think if it was any other army, I would think it would get immediately FAQ'd, roughly, because Grey Knights have kind of been in this... Let them have their moment. Is that, yeah, what, you're, is that the, what you're saying? They've, that, for me, they've always been in kind of in that same sort of position as Tyranids have been in, where they've kind of been a little bit of a beat stick in the last few editions. Yeah. I think this make this here makes them actually playable, which is quite good. Because the flyers aren't fifty percent obscured, so technically they wouldn't get covered, but yeah. they still get the money. Unless we see anyway. them absolutely dominating tournaments, this is. I think I think it'll stay <laughs> for now. Well, we are in a uh, we are in an age of assault centurions. We are in an age of centurions, yeah, <laughs> and right. possessed bombs yeah. and stuff. Where you know a few months ago, who would have thought that? No. Anyway, let's carry on. <laughs> All right, the fourth doctrine they get, so they get four of these doctrines. The tides is called the tide of escalation. Uh, while it's tied dominant, when a unit that uses the right of banishment ability manifests smite and is not resisted, it does an additional mortal wound. Okay, tides of banishment. What on earth is that? So tides of banishment is um, the right of the, banishment. Sorry, the right of banishment is a, the, a special rule that all of the Brotherhood of Psyche uh, okay. Grey Knights have when they cast it, but they can only do one mortal wound. Uh, but there is no scaling. Okay, it's the sort of thing I'd know so, if I'd read the codex yeah. properly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. So There's, that's really cool for Smite Spam, just reliable two damage. Yeah. Yeah. Pre- yeah. Really solid, just two damage every time. That's really, really good. Okay. Uh, and that is got all of their you um, sort of doctrines. All yeah. their, their and, and the way really the solid. way you change between between them is that you've got psychic power, haven't you? There is psychic power, which just lets you just change it, yeah. Yeah, and it's like a warp charge five psychic power, and then you yeah, change. Yeah, nice and easy. Oh, look, Grey Knights have got loads of like pluses to that power, so it's good. They, they get pluses as standard, don't they? I think uh, they get a plus li- one to cast. I think librarians do. Yeah, okay. Good, right. So that's that. Should we go on to their stratagems next? Because that's where all the cool stuff's happening in this book. Yeah, the stratagems are kind of cool. They've got some new, They've got some nice, cool new stuff, which is ace. Um, they First of all, they gained transhuman physiology. Ooh, this is going to be good. So I think this is really good, like, I think Grey Knight Terminators, in particular Paladins, got really good. Because they're basically three-wound Terminators, aren't they? They are, and they can just mix and match as much war gear as they want, so you can tool up to do whatever you and want. And they can deep strike in. So deep strike in. So Paladins getting transhuman physiology, and this is just the start. Yeah. Paladins are going to be as tough as nails. Yeah, so it's really, really good. That's the, the first like big stratagem that the, the, got transferred over from the Marines, essentially. Yeah. Um, the next big one I wanted to talk about is I'll, I'll get this out the window for now is dynamic insertion which is one CP um, if a Grey Knight unit arrives using its teleport strike ability uh, it arrives uh, more than three inches from an enemy rather than nine but cannot charge again that's that's really good yeah yeah like we covered in the uh, Flavors. Is one like I- anything arrives with more than nine and twelve Closer than nine inches is just awesome. I, I think I think it's really cool for like getting a unit which like a big unit hardens in somewhere where it's going to be really tough to deal with somewhere out of line of sight, for example. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to screen three inches. People have got better at it since playing against Tune Silicon, Colt, but it's still the ability to just do that's really good. Um, the thing you're either going to jump in there with flamers to do some ma- massive damage, or the thing what I think it'd be really useful for is literally just sniping characters. Yeah. So, like, you know, your opponent lines up their, their field and you just drop in three inches behind them and just nuke a character because they're the closest unit. Absolutely. I was thinking about it earlier. I was thinking you could, I mean, if you've got the points, you could have a massive 10 man paladin squad all with incinerators, <laughs> which are, I think, strength six, AP minus one, one damage flamers, which are horrific. Like, really, really good. Yeah. Pretty I, nasty. I honestly, though, I think Stormbolt was just generally. They're just cool. Yeah. yeah. Particularly on Terminators, because they always shoot at maximum range. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's really, really good. Really good. Cool. Uh, the next one is Overwhelming Assault. Um, use it on a Nemesis Dread Knight. You can add one to the character- characteristic, uh, and you can re-roll wound rolls and damage rolls of one. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? I mean, if you're getting in an assault. Yeah, yeah it's all right. Sold for uh, Nemesis Dread Knight Grandmasters. Just nice. Nice bit of... It's all right. That's having, better. Yeah, having D6 damage on their weapons and being able to re-roll ones is quite cool. Makes, it, makes their weapons yeah. just 
a, that bit more. Do you reroll damage rolls of one or is it? Damage one? rolls of one and wound rolls of one. Okay, that's better. That's yeah, better. Which is pretty good. Take some of the variants out of things, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Go on, hit me with some more. What else we got? So we've got, and obviously these are all from the the new book. Uh, Bring down the beast. Oh, uh, this one's good. This so, one's really good. After shooting with a Grey Knight army, uh, or sorry, with a Grey Knight unit in your army, select one vehicle or monster that was chosen as a target. Until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack with a Grey Knight unit, um, you can re-roll wound rolls. It's pretty good. That's uh, really good. I mean, you don't even need, you just shoot a bolt pistol. Yeah, you, you don't, don't even start need to a wound bolt it. pistol with a scout. You don't need to hit. You don't need to wound. It's like, oh, I shot it. What a shame. Everything else is re-rolling wounds. Yeah. yeah so All it's... my minus two to hit flyers. Here I come. Yeah. Or your um, your guys with the two damage side bolts. Yeah. Forty shots of that. Just re-roll to wound. Yeah. Uh, poor Tyranids. who are all there. <laughs> Big monsters, yeah. I'm sorry, are you psychers as well? That's a shame. Yeah, it's one of the term, <laughs> but literally, you can. It, it is against things like knights. It's just massive anti tank potential. It's great it? for focusing down a single big target that just needs to go away. Knights is a great example of yeah. that. Um, Lord of Skulls because they're probably going to be even more popular now. Went down in points to a chapter approved. Is that a thing? Is it? Oh yeah, they're like Lord of Skulls, like four hundred ninety points. Uh, ridiculous. Right. Super okay. Cheap. Uh, so moving on, we've got big guns never tire. Um, in the shooting phase when a grenade vehicle in your army is chosen to shoot with uh, until the end of the phase uh, you suffer no penalties for moving or shooting everyone yeah, else I mean those little space marine flyers which move around the board yeah storm walks um, yeah storm talons yeah. yeah one of those that's pretty cool um, because they, they naturally get the minus one to minus one modifier for moving don't they yeah. so those sort of things would be quite nice for or heavy weapons if you deep strike in a bunch of like psi cannon units yeah for me it's uh is it for a vehicle? Is it, it's, for a... it is for vehicles okay, only. So, work, yeah. so yeah, but uh, if you're running anything like Razorbacks, because they, they were a thing for a while, <laughs> Dreadnoughts, like um, Mortis Dreadnoughts. Yeah. I mean, like yeah, there's probably a use or two in there, but it's it's, it's just a standard space room one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think the flyers is probably the most useful yeah. thing to use it on from that. Let's have a look. Because so, we, we know how good Iron Hand flyers are, ignoring the negatives to hit. Yeah. The, the negative to moving and, fly, and fighting. Yeah, yeah. So, the next one is... I'm checking me notes, because I've got loads and loads of notes on this. Fury of the Proven. Uh, select a Grey Knight Terminator unit from your army till the end of that phase. When attacking an, uh, an ama- Ugh, I can't even talk. When resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, add one to hit rolls. Yeah, plus one to hit, basically, for uh, Tabbies. Ace, brilliant, great for Paladins as well, because they're Terminators. Uh, Everything's means... good with Paladins, apparently. Yeah, uh, Hammers are going to be the big one. Nemesis, Ooh, Demon Hammers. Yeah. Ignore the modifier. That's yeah, great. that's really good, actually. Yeah, really, really good. Cool. The next one is Redoubtable Defense. So this is a scaling strategy, uh, one or two CP. Uh, one CP if it's five models, and two CP for anything else. Uh, when resolving an attack made of a ranged weapon against that unit, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack. I like it. Yeah, I like minus it one damage lot. is really nice. Okay, so your, your paladins now are minus one to hit, uh, plus one because they're in cover, and then are minus one damage. And um, you can get minus one to wound with a psychic power as well. Yep. That is that is insanely good. Really, really good. Yeah. I and mean, with a lot of D three damage on the table now. D three flat three damages as well. This this is essentially bumps you up to you know having four wounds, doesn't it? It's, it makes paladins really really good because essentially it takes or stalker two, bolt rifles instead yeah, of takes two of them to kill. Yeah, I think it's. Because well, most things are, are D3, two, two damage, aren't they? Three so or takes, two damage yeah. at the moment, aren't So they? rather than taking two Stogobot robbers to kill a Terminator, it now takes three to kill to kill him. Yeah, and of course you'll be uh, <laughs> you'll be wounding them on fives as well. Five being fives to wound with the power, yeah. Yeah, with minus one to hit, yeah. which isn't that great, but it's there. <laughs> it's there, but useful, but really good. Really, really, really solid. Uh, the next one is Steady Advance. Uh, use a strategy in your shooting phase. When a Grey Knight infantry unit from your army is chosen to shoot with, Till the end of the phase, um, for the purposes of bolter discipline, you count as moving uh, as being stationary. Yeah. So 
I know it's a standard Space Marine one, but it's actually got a lot of utility in a Grey Knight's army because you count as being stationary, so you, you can deep strike in or gate over your uh, your unit of um, your unit of whatever infantry armors, storm bolters, it's strike team. Yeah. yeah, they count as staying stationary, so now they have their forty shots with a ten man unit instead of twenty, and then you use your astral aims and there's you know forty shots shooting out of line of sight. Yeah. Oh, it's really good, and you can make them two damage. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, the next one is Untainted and Unbowed. So this is a Purifier-specific stratagem. Um, when you... Then this unit is chosen as a target for an attack. Until the end of the turn, they have a 4-up in fun. <laughs> is that 1 CP? It is 1 CP. I, I can't see any. That's... That's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, really good. It's for purifiers. So Which ones are the purifiers? Those are the guys who have the um, the six inch range smite. They've got the better smite. But they've got storm bolters and pointy sticks, have they still? They're grey knights, so they can have whatever they want. Okay. <laughs> because they can. But they're elites, are they? They are elite choice. But just having a reactive four up in them. Yeah. So again, that's great. You just take a big unit of ten of them. In fact, I wouldn't even give them any special weapons. I would just give them like the halberds and storm yeah. bolters and just go. Yeah, they were four pin one. Good luck. I think that's just such a cool little utility unit. You probably don't want, don't want to run more than one unit of it. Otherwise, it'd be like you know your lightning fast reflex or all these other things where you can tease it out and then just shoot the other unit. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's not just a shooting. It's just a flat. Just when just when you're a target of an attack, so you can use that in. Um, so you can use it in the combat phase. As you well. can use it in combat phase as well. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, and purifies the combat are pretty nasty as well. So they're yeah. free attacks on the charge, which is quite nice. Yeah, really, really good. What what I've noticed in this uh, supplement so far is they know that Grey Knights are an elite army. They know they don't have many command points, and actually, a lot of these stratagems are one and two command points. Yeah, their the stratagems are priced really they're, fairly. To they're, be they're priced as if they're an elite army. Yeah. So you could you could run just a single battalion and still get away with all the cool strategies in this without too much of an issue. Yeah. Which is quite nice. Uh, right, the next one. Uh, Preternatural Senses. And this is for a Pagation squad, which is the heavy weapon guys, basically. Okay. Um, when they fire Overwatch, they Overwatch on fours rather than sixes. Oh, God, not another unit doing this stupid Iron Hand shenanigans. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, that's not annoying. Yeah. That's not annoying at all. <laughs> like I said, it's it's not quite as utilitarian as Iron Hands because they can cast on pretty much they can use on anything, but it's, it's only for Pagation squads. I get a but yeah. but I mean, you could camp a unit of five of them on an objective, and no one's going near that unit. If you you know, especially with like silencers or um, heavy side cannons. Yeah, yeah. It's honestly overwatching on fours is amazing. Yeah, really we've seen how powerful that is. Okay, last stratagem, Simon. Right, the last one is Empiric Surge. It's one CP. Um, when a Grey Knight Psychic from unit has a mass vested of power until the end of that phase when a Psychic test is taken for a friendly Grey Knight unit within 6 inches of that model uh, sorry that unit add 1 to the total that's really good because you're going to get plus 1 for being a Grey Knight yep. plus 1 from this and you can yep. get plus 1 from what they call the Tides from the Tides the Tides are active so you can have plus 3 quite quickly yeah yeah. That's that means you're casting smites on twos and it also means that you're guaranteed to change over your... Um... It guarantees you change, You can use the power to change your tide. Yeah. Uh, and as a power to give you one CP back as well, which is great. So you can just go, Whee! let's go CP back, please. Yeah. Which is quite nice. Uh, yeah, solid. Like It's um, of a unit as well. So if, if a, a big unit casts a power, it's six inches radius of that unit. So if you spread them out over a, like, a big line of mm. uh, like strike squad, yeah, you can affect quite a large amount of your army with, yeah. with that spell. With that and, and I think some of the, the stratagems such as Astral Aim are really essential to get off and if you don't get them off you've dropped a massive unit of guys behind line of sight blocking you've chained your, your tide over so you get the plus to your um, plus damage to your side bolts yeah. and then and then if you don't get Astral Aim off they're just stuck there Yeah. <laughs> so I, was... I think guarant almost guaranteeing to get things off is really really good yeah I mean if you're not in I mean if you're not in the um the plus one casting uh, tide you could go to the mortal wound one and it'd be plus two to cast and every time you do a smite it's two mortal wounds yeah which I think is really really good mm. but you see you could you could you could be in one tide when you were getting all your powers off yep. and then if you wanted to change over to the damage one in your shooting yeah then you, do, you, just, you just cast that at the end of your psychic phase yeah, so you absolutely. can be in a plus one for your psychic phase and the last thing you do is yeah I'm going to change now yeah 
So you can do that and then change back to like, oh, I can't speak and cover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. Good luck shooting me now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all the, uh, the the really big stratagems I wanted to go through. Yeah, I, I think on, so. I think they're really good. Really good. Should we just quickly cover the psychic power? Because I think this this is what really interacts with Yeah, it, yeah it? I think we, we should. So the, the first one is warp shaping, which is uh, castle of five and you can change your current warp, uh, tide. That's that's the big one. So you cast on freeze when that powers <laughs> up when that stratagem's in effect, which yeah. is pretty good. But I think it's almost guaranteed to go off. Yeah. Which is huge for your game plan, isn't it? Because each one of them does something completely different. Absolutely. Looks really, really good. Um, next one is Armoured Resilience. Uh, select a Grey Knight Infantry unit within 12 inches of Psyker. Uh, minus one to wound. Yeah, it's yeah. it's huge. It's huge. Can Paladins cast it on themselves? So they've got Psykers in the unit. The great knights. The great knights. The great knights. Everyone's, everyone's, a, psychic, everyone's yeah. a psychic. Okay, so you you see now you're minus one to hit, you're plus one for being in cover, you're minus one damage, and you're minus, minus one, one to wound. wound. Yeah, yeah. It's a warp charge of six. So and actually, of course, it's a warp charge of four with the strategy in effect. And, and of course, you can put sanctuary <laughs> on that unit as well, so they get they're on a four up in fun. So they're on a four up in fun. Yay! <laughs> so Honestly, really I think I think a big paladin unit is actually really good now. Those, that, those buffs yeah it's really good uh, the next power is ethereal manipulation uh, warp charge 7 sector 1 grey knight uh, unit in 6 inches of psyche when resolve an attack against that unit in the shooting phase um, or and is within half range you can re-roll to hit yeah, that's pretty pretty easy for grey knights everyone has teleport strike so it's really easy to get within 12 inches of all your storm bolters so it's an aura of rerolls to hit, is it? It's pick one unit. Okay, that's that's still pretty nasty, but yeah. But yeah, it's good. Um, the next one is Edict Imperator. <laughs> I love the uh, the names of these. Uh, cast them at 12 inches. Um, that unit can shoot as if it were the shooting phase and then move as if it was the moving phase. But they can't... Um, they can't shoot. Shoot after. or charge again after they've done it. I really like this. I really, really like this. Um, I'll tell you why I like this a lot. It's um, essentially you can. It's almost like a fire and fade. So you've got one unit doing your astral aim. Yeah. Which, which is from the original codex, which is just shoot out line of sight, and then you teleport in another unit just in front of the wall, and then you and then you shoot, and then you um, you fire and fade back behind the wall. So you've effectively you're shooting with um, two units out of line of sight. Yeah. What what charge is that? It is warp charge seven. Sorry, warp charge five because you're going to have the the strategy of an effect and the plus one to cast. So yeah, so it's. I mean, obviously, if it goes wrong and you're just stuck out in the open, it's going to suck a little bit. But, it, it is, but you're you're more likely than not with all the yeah the the payoff for being able to do that is massive if it goes off, which is yeah. really good. Because yeah, um, why, why shouldn't more things in the game just ignore line of sight? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we don't get access, uh, great nights like access to things, stupid things like I don't know, world wins or no, they the just have astral aim. Yeah, we just have to do it with a normal weapons, a good old fashioned way. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the next one is Imperian Domination. Uh, warp Charge Seven. Uh, if manifested, you get CP back. That's a win. Yeah. Why, cool. why not try that every single phase? Yeah, you might as well. You might as well give that power to somebody. It's really, really good. Um, for an army that is quite elite and is not going to have huge amounts of CP, um, this is their get CP back. But that's, you know, over a six turn game, that's an extra six CP. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which, you know, an extra six CP just for nothing. I mean, you, maybe you fail one of them. So yeah. maybe you get five CP back. But that, that's like having an extra battalion. Well, with their. With their um, Stratagems being reasonably like cheap, yeah. you essentially get a one CP strap but, for but free it, every turn, which is really good. But it's like having an extra battalion for free. Yeah, it really is. It's really, really good. And then the last one is Inner Fire. Uh, so you have to select a unit within one inch of the Psyker, so it's going to be a, it's a combat uh, yeah. power. Um, if the test is passed, uh, roll a dice for uh, the total score of the power. And on a three plus, the enemy takes a mortal wound. But if you roll a one, the psyker takes a mortal wound. Ooh, that's weird. It is. It's it's a bit like the old school purifier power. So purifiers had an in combat like set everything in in front of them on fire spell. This is kind of the now. Um, it's all charge five, so it's cheap to cast. Yeah, it's a little bit too uh, random for me. It's it is a little bit random. Um, 
But it could do a lot of mortal wounds, to be fair. If it you've got could. It to like a nine, then you get nine dice on every three up, you do a mortal wound. Yeah, it is pretty good. I mean, like I said... So that, that, that could dump out a lot of mortal wounds. Yeah, and like I said, with, with their plus one to cast and the plus one strat, they're only casting on three. So even if you roll like four or five... No, you, you, want, you, want, you, want a, you want to cast big value. But you dice. want it big. And just roll the dice and hope you don't get ones. Yeah. It's kind of like having a psychic plasma, isn't it? Just that I hope I don't roll ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you cast your plus one CP first, and then you get a free reroll for, for, your, oh, for yeah, one of your yeah, dice. Yeah, of course again. you do, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm with you now. But that, that's got that's got the potential to dump out like six or seven more wins on someone. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I mean, I take it back. I quite like this one actually. Yeah, yeah. It, on on first glance, you think eh, it's, it's got to be using combat. It's not great, and is then it, you realise that is just, it in combat. Well, you've got to be within one inch, so oh, it, right. it, it is a combat. I don't like it again. <laughs> I, I kind of like way it. Way too situational again. It is. Because so it's going to be on your second round of combat because somebody's got to charge you or you've got to charge it and then you've still got to be within an inch of them when it comes back round to your psychic phase. I mean, it is true. I don't like it. No. <laughs> I, I went full circle there. I, I like it. I think it's got potential, especially because Great Knights in general are going to be quite survivable. They're probably going to be able to tank yeah. damage. So if you take that on a paladin squad, that's funny because you go, oh, you're going to charge me. Okay, cool. I think you killed none. All right, cool. My turn. And the first thing you do is immediately just do a load of more wounds, and you go, "Yeah, I'm going to hit you now with all of these uh, force force weapons." <laughs> so at plus one to hit. As at well. plus one to hit, yeah. And, yeah. So I think it's got play. It's situational. Um, if your enemy has like some kind of like way to survive that, it's pretty annoying. Yeah. But uh, yeah, fun anyway. Okay. Cool. Right. Uh, Relics of Titan. Is there any good ones? Um. Is there a relic pistol? There's usually a relic pistol. There is not a relic pistol. No, is there no, a no. relic sword? It is a relic sword, yes. Is it any good? Blade of the Forsworn. It is a... It's a four sword. Uh, but it, so it's a power sword, but flat free damage. And it ignores invulnerable saves on demons. So if you're fighting... Possessed you... Bomb, for instance. Uh, this is mean, because you hit them with that sword and you just go... Yeah, all of this stuff just dies. Yeah. Um... I think that's situationally good, but because yeah. you can situationally choose relics, you know, it could be good. Yeah. Come on, give me, good, something, give, give me some good relics. Uh, okay. Uh, Sanctic Shard. When a psychic test is taken for a model with this relic, you can re-roll the result and add one to the total for psychic tests for this model with this relic. Hi, I'm a guy with now plus four to cast. <laughs> 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 I think I think it's overkill in most situations. <laughs> no way, that's but, awesome. Uh, yeah, so if you're casting one of those, um, like seven warp charge powers, yeah. you can be plus three to cast that like naturally with yeah. that relic, which is quite nice. But it's for your key powers. powers. That, that's the one you're going to go for, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I mean, we take we take we take the Mickey and say like, oh, you're plus four to cast, but it's it's nice having something that just guarantees you're almost getting powers off every turn yeah. especially for this army which so even double ones you're getting warp charge six off then yeah yeah okay um the augurium scrolls when there's an attack with a nemesis weapon by this model in a friendly granite unit uh, within six inches of this model any unmodified hit rolls of six score an additional hit hey it could explode in six is relic it's alright pretty good it's combat which is it's big thing you've got to be in combat to use it well you can get maximum of three relics so honestly I don't think that's the one you're going to choose no this this one's pretty good I like this one it's a stave of supremacy um, so it's a nemesis, nemesis warding stave uh, when a psychic test is taken within 18 inches of this relic um, they peril on any double that's really good yeah, that's really that's good, really good. That's really I solid. like it I like it. Yeah. Especially because a lot of the non-marine armies going around are usually quite psychic heavy. Yeah. That's pretty good. Or any Grey Knights. Or any Same. other Grey Knights. You may yeah. actually see more than one Grey Knight player in a tournament now. There is there is that, you know, chance of a mirror match now. Who would have yeah. thought? Um, the next one is Artisan Nullifier Matrix. It's for a librarian only. So wh wh where do they come up with these names from? Uh, I imagine they must have a team that is just... They type in a load a random of number, random I reckon, generator. Yeah, I reckon they type in a load of like they put a load of Latin and a load of futuristic things yeah. into a generator, and then you hit a button, and they just and it go, just jumbles it all around. They jumbles it all around, and yeah. then they're like, "That's the next relic for a codex." Yeah, I think that's how they do it. And, and then they just randomly cycle pistol, power sword, staff. Yeah, 
and, and then Anna. it's yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Everybody has one of each. Uh, so yeah, it's for a librarian only. Going to within six inches of his model, uh, you can increase or decrease by one the value shown on one of the dice for uh, for uh, sighting tests. Okay, that's, so it's another plus one to cast. So it's a, it's, a, it's another plus one to cast. Yeah. Okay, that, that's good if you really wanted that. Yeah, it's quite nice. I mean, it's it stops you from periling, basically. Is it? It's like an anti-perils power. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. So you can, obviously, if you're all double one, you just go, right, increase six, that. Yeah. yeah, or double six, you just go, I'll just decrease that by one. Yeah. Quite nice. Makes it nice, nice and safe for the power casting, which is quite cool. And then the last one is a Ferric Conduit. Uh, which is a fancy thing for a tech marine, and when a tech marine uses their ability to repair a vehicle, they heal 2d6 rather than... Oh, sorry, 2d3 rather than d6. I was going to say, oh my god, 2d6! No, no, sorry, 2d3 rather than d3. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's cool. It, it's pretty cool. But... Are you going to run tech marines? Probably not. No, okay. I, I think the big problem with the um, that relic is that most green knights probably not going to run a ton of vehicles and what vehicles they are running are going to be like storm ravens and things they're going to be so fast yeah. the tech marine's never going to catch them to do any yeah. use to them anyway so uh, situational um, Nemesis Dreadnoughts are vehicles aren't they? Uh, yes maybe mm. but again they're, they're going to have teleporters so they're just going to be zooming up the board they're going to be way 2d3 up range, wounds so. on the Dreadnought I can, yeah I can see some value in that yeah saying that I mean it can the, the tech marine can deep strike can they? Yeah, because well, you they all have the, uh, what's it called, the teleporting. Okay, fair enough. I, I don't think you're going to use it. No. So, guys, there's no new Warlord traits. No, no new Warlord traits for them. Um, but what you do get is a massive um, chaplain tree. We do, yeah. They get their own uh, litanies, which is kind of cool. Uh, and so these are all completely different than Space Marines. Yeah, so we'll start with their main one, which is Litany of Faith, uh, which is uh, units within six inches, uh, get five up, feel no pain against Warlord Woods. Oh, that's good. That's pretty good. I quite like that. Yeah, pretty solid. Uh, Words of Power is the next one. Uh, Grenade units have been six inches. When someone attack and made a model with a weapon that has a random damage characteristic, you could re-roll a dice when determining the damage. Is this in shooting as well as combat? This just says when you're resolving an attack made against with a you uh, made with a weapon that does multiple damage. Yeah, I mean, cool. you know, for all your D three um... nemesis weapons, yes, all D three damage. Yeah, so you can. We roll the damage for that. Yeah, no, massive. Or if you just got like last cannons and stuff. Yeah. Equally well. Very, yeah. very nice. Yeah, pretty solid. Uh, and then, uh, Intonement for Guidance. Uh, when resolving an attack made or ranged weapon by a model in this unit, ignore hit modifiers and ballistic skill modifiers. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, this is pretty big. Uh, and it's grant units within six inches. Doesn't specify infantry only. It's sorry, is it on all units within six by a unit? Uh, I slept, sorry, it's like one granite unit. Okay, six. but that's still sorry, sorry, yeah. ridiculously good. But that's really good, like ignoring. So for that's great against the minus four Discordant Lord, for instance. Yeah. Really, really good. And also, because it ignores ballistic skill modifiers, uh, you can kill Kalexus Assassins. Yes, really, yes, you really can. easily. Uh, which are a pain in the ass for a grey knight, aren't they? So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's, that, that is a game-changing power there. It's really good. It's only for one unit, so I guess you'd probably again use it on are you gonna, Paladins, are you gonna, probably. Or your 40 shots. Or your 40, well, the Paladins have 40 yeah, shots. Yeah, 40 shots, shooting out a lot of sight, and they ignore all negatives. Fantastic. Yeah, which is pretty good. And they're two damage. Um, refrain of Convergence. If the Lydney is firing, and when it died, the witch test had taken with this model, I'd free to the total. <laughs> what? <laughs> so because the Grey Knights, their chaplains are also psychers, so they can deny powers. So you can be four, five, you can be plus seven to your deny the witch if you had all of the deny stuff up at the same time. Um, but they're, they're not librarians, so they didn't get the plus one, do they? Uh, but he's a Grey Knight, so he gets plus one for just being a Grey Knight. Uh, isn't it Grey Knight Librarians, or is it just Grey Knights? Just Grey Knights. Okay, so you get plus one for being that, and you get plus three from... And it, and it stacks, does it? Uh, there's nothing saying that it doesn't, okay, so, so okay, I, it assume, does, yeah. I assume it does. So what do you do? <laughs> it's a really good way of getting super smites off and things as well. Well, it's really good. So if somebody rolls something like a nine for a psychic power, you go, right, I'm plus seven. <laughs> so I'm denying it on a three. <laughs> 
So, I mean, if you really... Is, is that on a unit or is it just on... It's you? on him. He can only do it once. Only he gets the plus three. But if there's, like I said, if there's a power that you don't want to use the, um, the strat for to deny, because it's only once, um, that's great for just being like, I need a load of like casting in this one yeah, to yeah, get yeah, power, yeah, okay. deny power. Really good. Recitation of projection. Uh, one great knight unit within six inches adds six inches to the range characteristic of bolt weapons and soy weapon models uh, in that unit that are yeah, equipped with. Again, very nice if you've just got that big line of sight blocker and you're trying to sit behind there in Astrolane. Yeah, so 30 inch bolters that fire f- uh, full shots. Yeah. At strength six, AP minus one, two damage. Yeah, it's it's not the it's not the most crazy one there, but it's it's nice. Yeah, pretty solid. It's almost like you're a dark angel. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, they have got some dark angels. Wish they had some of this cool stuff to be fair. <laughs> but they get the six inches, but they just don't get the rest of it. Yeah, and then the last one is invocation of focus. Um, Second grade that unit six inches. When resolving an attack at made of this model with a nemesis weapon or a side weapon, improve the armor penetration of that weapon by one. So now those side bolt, oh, bolters and no. I strength six, AP minus two and two damage. Yeah. Ignore line of sight. Ignore cover. Yes, and, and Fire everything. Fire shots, plus yeah. six inch range. <laughs> oh my god. So, is, is that everything, is it? That is everything. I will just preface this saying, like, all these chaplain powers are really good. However... You, you can only get chap. You can only cast one per guy. Only cast one per guy. They don't have, get access to Master of Sanctity. And their chaplains are always in Terminator armour, which means they're a bit of an investment in points. Mm. So they're not very mobile, that's the thing. Or you can deep strike them in, but the turn you don't de- you deep strike them in, obviously you can't cast the power because yeah. it happens at the start. I think because they only cost one, they can only cast one litany. They're not super points efficient, being in Terminator armor. I mean, they're solid. They're giving on their two plus four off because they have the Rosarius. Yeah. So they're pretty solid. But I mean, com- when you compare it to something like Space Marines, who can do the exact same job with a cheaper chaplain for what seventy two ish points, something yeah. like that, I mean, you're talking over hundred points for them. Okay. Chat plan for right, so bringing this all together, the things that I think are really awesome in this codex, and th- there is, <laughs> uh, just reading through this, even as an, a non Grey Knight player, I was like, this stuff is amazing. I mean, it's, they've taken a, quite frankly, pretty poor codex and really turned it around with this. I Dave, I will give a massive go to for whoever did this with Grey Knights, thank you, because this is going to make what, this army so playable now. There's yeah. so much stuff you can do with this. I'm I'm really excited because uh, you know, like I said I'm a long term green up player I haven't seen them on the table for so long no one's seen them on the table for so long no, I no genuinely think this turns green up around completely yeah. I think there's like I said there's a lot of cool stuff you can do it it's all combo based so it plays a little bit like Blood Angels they're all like the combos or Death Watch yeah. they all revolve around the combos you take but that that's a fun book and yeah, that's a fun fun yeah. like addition to all that stuff and it means they utterly dominate the psychic phase with it as well. Absolutely. Um, but the things you're going to really work is paladins with their uh, minus one to hit, the minus one to wound, and the minus one damage. Um, that that's really good. And the plus one to wound run with their uh, from the sanctity as well. So yep. sanctuary even. So that that unit you're going to see a lot. You're going to see units which are just sitting behind big line of sight blockers and either. Um, using their astral aim to ignore line of sight and cover, or they're going to sit just in front of it, cast the other psychic power after they've shot, and then move back behind it as well. Yeah, so I think you know you're going to have the massive paladin bombs, and you're going to have these units uh, just moving in and out. Yeah. You've got the strap to be uh, you know get the four up in run on that squad, whatever it's called. I can't remember. Oh, the strike strike teams. Oh, God knows what it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, they, there's... All, they all look the same to me. And yeah. then um, you know, God, and those those chaplain powers, they're absolutely amazing. They're, they are superb, absolutely superb. And, and I think the ability to have minus two to hit flyers. That's the big one. I think um, that's the big one. Because just, just a standard, just put them in terrain, they're all minus two to hit. Um, and then always counting as in cover and, mi- and minus one to hit for your whole army. I mean, that's a really good starting position. You know, just, just immediately makes Grey Knights more survivable. Um, and the other thing is obviously they've got the gate of infinity so you can uh, buff up a unit like a paladin bomb with all the chaplain powers and then gate them over yeah so you know your chaplains don't actually have to be that mobile because you just drop in the paladin bomb and then you you cast it all up and then you move it somewhere else yeah absolutely Um, though technically I don't think you can 
deep strike them in and then move them on the same turn actually because it counts as moving and you can't yeah, move so it's unfortunately it because of the FAQ that happened with things like yeah. warp time after rifle and deep strike you can no longer do it but on subsequent turns you could buff something up and then move it across the board or you could start the paladins on the board and then deep strike them across the yeah. so there, there's definitely ways of doing it um I think the buffs to vehicles are great. Minus two to hit flies is amazing. Gives yeah. you really good ranged fire support, which is probably the, the thing the Grain has lacked the most is something like a ranged yeah. support. So Storm Ravens with LAS cannons is a really solid shout now, I think. Really, really good. Yeah. So, guys, um, what do you, let us know what you think about the Grey Knights book. And if there's any Grey Knight players out there, if you exist, please let us know what we miss, because we are not Grey Knight players. But I really want to be after this. Yeah, my, I've just sold my Grey Knight army, so... <laughs> I might, have to, ah. I might have to rebuy the entire thing again, I think. <laughs> That's brilliant. And in case you've not seen it on our site already, we've, we should hopefully have up a Dark Angels review and a Thousand Suns review. Yeah. And um, don't forget, guys, you can also check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just type in D6 Evolution. Yeah. Always forget the plug. I'm so glad Simon's here. <laughs> right. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.